moving on from that just as an update on print works some actual good news here courtesy of the guardian actually said the last dance london's super club print works aims to reopen in 2026 so you have to wait some time but there's a possibility that print works will reopen in 2026 after closing just the other day basically which is hilarious because it kind of proves you know that all that song and dance they did about flipping closing and whatnot and it's the last ever event rush to get your tickets you know they got me really good right pick up the indian dude appreciate you brother top five european nations based on their club scene Big up that you do top five european nations based on their club scene it's a hard one because i haven't been to many that's a problem i've only been to clubs in spain really um spain france and germany i've not been to every, any other european nation with the purpose of techno tourism that's why i'm saying i'm, I'm getting a bit lazy on the berlin so i'm getting a little bit comfortable with the berlin thing and i need to kind of explore other options and do other things because when i was on my absolute tip before when i was doing my techno tourism i was going to i was going to places like frankfurt like that was one of my first trips i went to after going to berlin and frankfurt if you've been there it's a really shitty city really for the most part apart from you know the financial district and brothels and stuff there's no reason to be in flipping um frankfurt but i went there to visit one of the best clubs they've got there in that city it's called robert johnson it's named after this famous jazz musician and it legitimately is one of the best clubs i've been to in my entire life it overlooks this amazing river in frankfurt people kind of smoke cigarettes at the back there the sun rises it kind of the, the light bleeds through on the inside of the club it's kind of like 500 capacity it's in the specked out really amazingly whatever um but long story short to answer the question i need to go to the more european nations to have a better idea of where you know where the top five kind of club scenes are but i would say off the, off the top of my head from what i kind of know from people's talking about various things out there in terms of scenes scenes right i would say germany of course um i would say um holland or netherlands i would say probably france now the paris scene and and outskirts is starting to pop off now or has been popping up for a while um i'll say spain personally because i always have a good time when i go out there i know some people don't like it if you're not a fan of the spanish people especially the types that come over here in club and whatnot but i don't mind them and then i would say lastly italians as well for the same reason i feel like those two countries specifically have a very specific club scene and i love how energetic and enthusiastic they are about it and passionate about the scene and whatever it may be they're real fans of the djs too i think a lot of these will tell you i think so the big ones would say that they really love going to places like that um italy and spain because i feel like they get a lot of kind of fan love as well because i think a lot of people there are heads a lot of chin strokers in that scene but there's loads of places popping up i remember somebody told me in my comments i should check out places like latvia i should check out places like denmark um because the, the city there copenhagen is meant to be pretty popping um obviously stockholm and sweden is meant to be doing some good bits as well um the, the scene in portugal i've heard is really good places like you know lisbon and whatnot are starting to pop off so there's many locations to go to but for sure those are the ones i'll kind of mention and the people are mentioning in the chat um greece is getting up there a big up coin as well in chat big up big up um louis shards are saying germany nl yeah exactly see people are saying the same thing i'm saying okay yeah and poland that's what i've heard as well um nice one louis um i've heard the 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 Krakow scene is legit. Like the clubs out there are really good, also. So it's definitely ways to, to check out. And again, um, I'm not too sure. If, is Georgia in the European Union? I don't sure if they are, but Georgia is meant to be a pretty cool um, place to go visit. They have one of the best places um, to club there on in the main city there called Tbilisi. One of the legendary clubs out there. Um, so definitely places to go and check out. So yeah, I'm into it. But yeah, going back to this article, courtesy of Guardian. It mentions that um, print works may be reopened again in 2026. Um, the article says as follows, after six years in which it has established itself as London's most ambitious and visually impressive new venue for electronic music, um, the, the, the closes doors in final time on Monday night. Like countless inner city club closures in recent memory, this was a decision prompted by the commercial demands of our gigantic property developers. Over the next four years, the 53 acre site in which Printworks will sit will be flattened and rebuilt as developers British land and Australian super, transforming it into a glittering array of upscale shops, restaurants, offices, and luxury flats. The issue I have with gentrification, legitimately for me, because i have a complex relationship with gentrification because in the place that i was brought up in right the place the area that i was brought up in which is around east london which is the custom house canning town area 
um, which happens to be just around the corner from Fold. Like I was actually brought up in that area, which is pretty nuts to think of. I kind of played around that area for the most part. Where Fold was was where all the local kind of postal um, offices were and whatnot. So if I kind of had a delivery of sneakers from the US or whatnot that I missed out on, I didn't pick up from the shop, I'd have to go and pick it up there around the Fold area, which is pretty funny. So now that place has become like hipster central. But for the most part, that area that I've kind of grown up in and obviously other parts of East London were, I think, massively benefited from, you know, light gentrification when we had the Olympics come here and they kind of, you know, they promised to rebuild certain places. They pumped money to certain things to make it look nicer and to kind of appease the tourists that were coming in because they didn't want to see a dilapidated, you know, Baltimore in the wire looking ass place. So they kind of injected the money into it. And I think it overall, it kind of helped the city or it helped where I was from look a bit nicer. And of course, a lot of people that I grew up with ended up getting jobs working, you know, during the Olympics, being kind of stewards and whatnot, because they ended up hiring a bunch of people. So gentrification for me, I think, can work sometimes in those kind of cases. But the issue I have to resolve with gentrification is that it's so unimaginative. Like we have so many of these things in London, right? Where it says here, um, they're going to rebuild that space into a glittering array of upscale shops, restaurants, offices, and luxury flats. There's no shortage of these areas in London. Yo, big up the Indian dude. Appreciate the super chat. Five dollars. Big Georgia up. is a good shout. One of the best cuisines I have come across. Later, Zinga. Yeah, big up, big up, big up the Indian dude. Appreciate you. Oh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah. Um. I don't know, Central European food or Eastern European, however you're going to call it, can be a little bit hard for me to kind of get into because a lot of it's just like meat and potatoes, legitimately meat and potatoes. They cook it really well, don't get me wrong, but it can get a little bit boring after a while. But I'm open to see what Georgian food is like. That would be really interesting because I know as a culture, they're a little bit trippy because I'm at even places like, you know, Tbilisi, Tbilisi, Tbilisi being a good example of it, they're extremely, extremely conservative and religious, but then they have this incredible, really thriving, bubbling sort of scene of this LGBTQ kind of, you know, techno dance scene and whatnot that's kind of blowing up there on the sly, on top of all this flipping crazy conservatism and religiousness that they have going on there. So I'd imagine with that alone, that it would somehow lead to maybe some interesting food options just from that and of course where it's at in the in europe it's basically landlocked surrounded by loads of really cool vibrant countries that i think have really cool cuisine so that probably is going to seep in there but from what i remember of visiting places close to georgia places like czech republic for instance like the food was a little bit you know the prog you know it's just meat and potatoes after a while it can get a bit boring but you know what do i know but yeah um I wish gentrification would just be a little bit more imaginative. If you're going to gentrify a place, especially after all these cool, interesting people have come along and basically made a place that was overlooked and people didn't care about, cool and interesting and fun to hang out in, at least offer something imaginative when it comes to gentrifying the area. Don't just turn it into another district of glass and aluminium and steel crazy contraptions. We've seen it all before, these soulless coffee shops, you know, with these big glass windows and these big glass doors and these soulless bike shops and local flipping, you know, um, what you call it, uh, vegetable shops and whatnot. They trying to make it feel like it's an organic, you know, um, fucking homemade business type of vibe. It's just annoying. Like at least have some sort of half and half, and you never get that usually. You never get degentrified, which is really strange. I never understood that. Like I understand coming in. And maybe seeing a, 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 an opportunity to make some money because that's basically what the point of it is i get it but wouldn't you want to increase your chances of making money by somehow working in conjunction with the people who help to make that place pop in so maybe you know putting together some sort of coalition or some sort of partnership that would allow you uh, to keep the main spots of that area popping and opening whilst you build in and around it all your shiny glass you know ugly contraptions so you have this nice sort of marriage going on but i feel like sometimes you know for the most part they'll just they'll just leave one place there that was there before the gentrifiers got there build around it all these amazing you know all these horrible sorry you know nondescript copy and paste steel and glass contraptions in terms of buildings these new people will move in there knowing nothing about the area, just seeing it as a cool place. 
they'll get annoyed at the people who are there beforehand because they're making too much noise and then because they are paying way more rent and they obviously have a lot more to kind of lose in that kind of case they'll then kind of get those people kicked out but i feel like if you kind of leave them in the kind of group if you kind of have more than two or three places there that were there before it kind of helps to help them band together but again you know i don't know much it continues the article but unlike most other shuttered clubs print works potentially coming back just before a surprise headline set from bicep on monday night's closing the venues operators border Live announced the provisional deal with british land for a revamp print works to reopen and develop the site on 2026 now again i like bulldog live but i'm gonna call flipping gas on this they definitely knew this was happening from the time that they announced the final shows i don't believe that this is just something they found out on they've been honey dicking and stringing along this closing like nothing you've seen before this reminds me of when uh, flipping sports direct here in the uk this flipping chain of you know crappy sports shops that sells like lonsdale and all these sort of brands in there that flipping you know guys who beat their wives and you know chuck their kids out a window sort of where they kind of strung along their closing for time after time they'd have these massive signs that said closing down sale everything must go and it went on for fucking years right until they finally got into you know administration bankruptcy and now they're sort of bleeding a slow death and the places are closing little by little but I feel like Bordwick Live did the same thing with Printworks. They knew for the longest time that the final date that they announced when it was a final date when I went to see Dixon play that time wasn't the final date. Then it got more dates on. Then I'm sure that they knew about this whole 2026 potential plan from ages ago, but they didn't want to announce it. So they kind of made everyone think that this is the final date to kind of squeeze you know, more ticket sales out of people, which I can't be mad at, but it's a little bit of a filthy game. But hey, here's what it is. It continues here. Simon Aldred, the co-owner and head of strategy at Bordwick Live, says he's heard of a lot of classic gentrification's narrative the last few weeks. Terrible landlords closing you down. Those kinds of negative vibes. But to be honest, British land invited us in and was much as it was, uh, pretty much as much as their idea as, as it was ours. So I want to give them some credit for that. We can't announce that reopening is definitely happening. We haven't signed any contracts, but the shape of the principles for a deal are there and we're going to be putting something in for planning permission in the next few weeks that is absolutely incredible to hear this includes so the article continues this includes um printworks cavernous main hall being retained in something like its original form aldred says he has architectural mock-ups which he could show me but for his insistence on sharing them with local community groups around candlewater before making them public now my main issue with printworks has always been the sound i think visually the place is fantastic the, you know the clue is in the name print works it's a former print factory and the way it kind of set up and you know the kind of structure in terms of it being a rectangular shape kind of going really long down it's kind of amazing i don't think visually i've seen any other space like that usually clubs are kind of in a you know in a somewhat of a square shape for the most part or a circle but you don't really see rectangular clubs really for the most part so the way that that kind of shaped and everything is crazy but when I went there last, maybe again I was, I was spoiled because I think I just had come back from Berlin. So I kind of went to a city that kind of credits and kind of pins their hat on having amazing sound in, you know, just random pubs and bars have great sound systems. So maybe I got spoiled. But I remember stepping into Prima, I was thinking, why does it sound so low? And then, of course, it ramped up over time, but you had to get really close to the front to hear the sound. It didn't really pick up the way it didn't really kind of hit you the way you kind of thought it would hit you because you walk into this massive site again printworks is a huge site massive they've got flipping food courts there they've got loads of toilets they've got a thousand bars with many attentive and great bubbly bartenders legitimately like everyone that works there is flipping is amazing apart from the security who are fucking annoying and they probably touch you up too much everyone else is flipping a star there right great place amazing loads of different rooms everybody can kind of lose yourself in so you kind of walk into it thinking you're going to be met with this wall of sound right it's going to be hitting you from all over the place it's going to be dizzying you know flipping it's going to take you on this wild ride and then what you end up hearing is like nah nah you know it's just the sound is just at the front you have to walk right to the front to hear the sound and by the time you do hear the sound right at the front it's too busy too hot and sweaty for me up there i want to have some room to dance I want to see what I'm kind of experiencing in real time. I don't want to be surrounded by people that always have their phones up in the air right around the front. So it gets a little bit off point. But structurally, I think it's absolutely amazing. Structurally, I absolutely love it. Structurally, I flipping love it. Um, it continues here. 
it says club promoters and property developers it's fair to say do not normally make much of the amicable bedfellows primworks reopening in opening sorry in 2017 followed the de decade in which the uk lost half of its nightclubs the london um over a third of its grassroots music spaces in many cases um because the buildings they occupied were sold off or redeveloped Bordeaux live business model has flipped um that conflict on its head by teaming up with developers rather than opposing them they've been able to operate a succession of cultural venues on a meanwhile basis in the gap between the site um between a site being acquired by developers and borders is moving in is a symbiotic exchange dancers get temporary access to otherwise impossible spaces while the cultural capital they bring with them helps to lay the groundwork for surrounding areas eventual redevelopment i've got two issues with this right two issues one issue is this one issue is that I feel like, um, I feel like there has to come a point where Baldrick Live puts their money where their mouth is and puts their skin in the game for real and just opens up their own club because they've probably done enough work now. They've got enough sort of, you know, insights and whatever it may be from all these different events and temporary spaces they've occupied that they could probably open up a space right now a club right now that would legitimately be one of the best clubs in the, in london or maybe even the world if they were to do so and i'd love to see that because i feel like this sort of like property guardianship sort of thing they've got going on where they essentially occupy these spaces you know on a temporary basis you know before they're going to get bulldozed down and it kind of gives the property developers an opportunity to make some money on the side easily to see how viable it is for whatever property they're looking to build and whatnot and it also gives a chance for a promoter to probably put on some more you know add you know some 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 more um risk worthy kind of events and whatnot and big books and bigger acts i would like to see something a little bit more permanent that'd be pretty good to go with but on the other side of things I, I think to myself maybe this actually is the only way to operate unless you're like a legacy club that's been around for a while it's really difficult or you spring up in an area that was really overlooked and underdeveloped like a canning town and east london where kind of i'm from right and in, in terms where kind of fold is that was an area that was kind of neglected for the most part by the scene and when fold popped up there they basically i think were able to kind of spring up at a time when no one kind of expected the club to be there and maybe take advantage of the fact that there weren't things in place in that sort of bar in newham that would prevent them from opening a space like that maybe now it's maybe a little bit more difficult who knows i'm not really involved in that sort of stuff i have no knowledge of it but i feel like i would love to see broderick live open up their own space that's what i want to see going forward i think that's going to be sick to see um it continues here says this approach has been widely successful at least financially boardwick's endeavors with printworks have seen around 200 million of investment flooding in from developers across the uk along the injections of capital from grand theft auto makers rockstar games with that back in boardwick has amassed a portfolio of more than 25 venues across the country from the 10,000 capacity depot mayfield in manchester to the warehouse project to a new venture beams in east london in london's royal docks it has also as anyone um who voted to print in the last three years can attest created spectacles of unparalleled scale and excellence with dance music fans treated to consistently stacked lineups pummeling sounds and dizzying visuals in particular the venue's thin virtuous um main room with a three-story video screen placed behind the stage and spotlights dancing vertical layers of exposed metal concrete feels like clubbing redesigned for the TikTok age. As Rosie Murphy shimmies her way through the I'm a piano tinge re-edit of Sing It Back on Monday's closing nights, countless dancers around me hold their phones up portrait style to capture a moment. Yeah, for sure. That's one thing they did really well. I feel like they created for sure one of the best social media friendly clubs that I've seen in London or in the UK for a very, very long time. Just the way it's designed the fact that it's all basically a portrait it looks amazing when you're filming it like that especially if you're standing towards the back you can see the entire length of the flipping club from the back as you're doing it people's phones in the air the lighting and stuff it really kind of captivates and adds to it so as much as i love the whole no photos policy in places like berlin and whatnot and other places around europe sometimes especially if you're in a place like the uk we have limited opening hours you kind of need people you kind of need people right to kind of spread the word word of mouth style and film loads of videos and share them on social media it kind of helps 
as much as they may annoy you these pages that share these clips of these cute girls in these kind of brightly colored clothes and whatnot dancing around in places i'm sure some of these venues will tell you that those clips of those girls dancing in these spaces has helped and added to more usually thirsty dudes decide to go there because they help that girl or those people are going to be there i'm sure this is a thing i'm sure it is so you can only imagine what it may do to a club like printworks where they invest so much money into flipping the flipping lighting and all the malarkey the screens that it must really really help and add to the whole entire experience it says here what's proved trickier it seems is ensuring that these spaces endure beyond a 15 second social media high or developer imposed cycles of de demolition and reconstruction the quote we always knew it was going to be an experiment says aldred but as soon as it started getting successful we started talking to british land about what the future might be this was clearly not a straightforward conversation when plans were submitted to Suffolk council in 2021 the provision of the cultural space akin to print was notably absent when the venue's attended closure was announced in 2022 aldred and Baudry had a Bite their tongue as angry tweets rolled in, say print work potential circulated, unable to reveal that they were already engaged in the highest sense to be on the scene talk for the rent turn of the same form. Uh, so while they're getting all that criticism, they were working in the deal behind the scenes. <laughs> it's hilarious. So if you can't blame print, you can't really blame Boardwalk Live for the closing of print works. I think they always knew it was going to be temporary. I think clubbers or people that go to clubs like myself, um, who have you, you kind of describe yourself, you probably forgot, and I know I did, that it was going to be a temporary space. You just kind of didn't really keep in mind. But it was always going to be temporary. And I think maybe because they did so well, people just thought they were going to hang around. I think that's what should happen. If you're going to hold these temporary spaces in the BDs, de facto property guardians there should be a potential if you do well that you get to keep the space and maybe they get to build around it. especially if they're building the entire because if i'm not mistaken that whole site is huge so if they're building on the entire site they can leave the flipping print works to you know to flip in the actual space club space itself like leave that to the club because it's legitimately a i think a um a a cultural icon it's, it's become like a cultural icon a place to visit for sure monument in some respects so why not leave it there like increase tourism in some i don't know i don't get it um it says the british land has responsibility to redevelop the whole site so what they can't do to be fair to them is just preserve the massive sacred cow for me and our narrow audience they have a job to do of course they have a job to do but also things change you want to make some money i don't know get in partnership with them do something come on man um so what that audience might look like when pretty much hopefully reopens in 2026 is another question true those who go clubbing to escape or defy the ceaseless pull of global capitalism might already find pretty much a little bit too sanitized for their taste around it with a glossy utopia of luxury flats boutique hotels and exclusive victories the people who feel invited or excluded from the party are bound to shift even further that's the thing though i feel like nowadays we understand and i know i do now I kind of understand the appeal of these big mega spaces because sometimes it is nice to see a really polished, well put together show from the elite DJs and producers out there on the scene. It's all well and good going to warehouse events and, you know, start, you know, kind of like um, startup quote unquote events in smaller spaces by smaller kind of promotion arms and collectors and whatnot and friends of friends. That's all cool to see. But from time to time, I also think it's important to go and see the best of the best, especially if you're involved in the music. It's good to get and get inspired by seeing guys like Solomon, by seeing guys like Bicep, even the Peggy Goo, I don't really rate as a flipping DJ or whatnot, but still in terms of a production and where this space is going to play, they're going to be playing in these big spaces it's probably important to go and see them there also legitimately it's important yo big up my guy jarvis yes yes big up big up big up so it's important to see these people in these spaces so i feel like now more than ever now more than ever people are more open to go to these big spaces because they know it's going to be something different than what they used to go into their kind of quote-unquote smaller clubs it, you know you can be a fan of fold you can be a fan of corsica studios and all these places and still be fans of fabric and the print works so i think they kind of go hand in hand right they're all part of the same sort of space same sort of ecosystem in my humble opinion i think that is the case and i think going forward especially you know towards the end print works were inviting in a lot of those what i could deem them to be alternative you know promotion arms like the howls and the uh, what's it called um the few other lgbtq plus kind of seeing people and bring him into that space it only kind of adds to the 
the overall kind of flavor texture tapestry of these sort of places so it all kind of works hand in hand and then this quote here um this last paragraph that i move on it says there are probably people who are more radical than us around dance music says Aldred, not into the growing trend of sex positive clubbing as one example would i do sex positive parties in our venues given our land of relationships probably not because there are younger groups doing that really well already it kind of a niche gaps but we do take some of these people and amplify them and help them step up to a bigger space it's absolutely so i like that right maybe he's not going to do a flipping club verboten or whatnot in flipping print works it wouldn't make sense but i do like that he's open to the idea or they're open to the idea of platforming and kind of pushing the people that play in those places to also play in their spaces so that they have the opportunity to kind of play on a bigger scale maybe get their music and their sound to different people maybe just their perspective on clubbing or whatnot all that's out there i think that's really really important so big up broadwick live in general big up simeon is that how you say his name simeon aldred um over there sounding cool and obviously giving us some great insight there and i'm hoping they do reopen in 2026 make some tweaks hopefully up the volume a little bit because personally like i said i think it's a little bit too low over there but i'm happy to hear that one of our best clubs in london and something that i feel like you know added a lot to the nightlife scene is obviously going to be um given you know a chance to kind of do what they did best over there hopefully that happens hopefully 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 that happens 